I, Paul, in chains for the name of Christ, wish to relate to you the trials besetting me daily, in order that you may be inflamed with love for God and join with me in his praises. The prison here is a true image of everlasting hell. To cruel tortures of every kind, shackles, iron chains, manacles, are added hatred, vengeance, calumnies, obscene speech, quarrels, evil acts, swearing, curses, as well as anguish and grief. But the God who once freed the three children from the fiery furnace is with me always. He has delivered me from these tribulations and made them sweet. In the midst of these torments, which usually terrify others, I am, by the grace of God, full of joy and gladness, because I am not alone. Christ is with me. These words come from a Vietnamese cleric, Paul Le Bao Tin, in a letter he wrote in 1843, shortly before his martyrdom. Thankfully, such accounts are no longer a part of today's Vietnamese Catholic Church, and though it continues to be difficult to talk about freedom of religion, the Church has a strong presence in the country. Past among Vietnamese Catholics, the memory of faith history, marked by suffering, remains strong. These are the original stocks used by St. Joseph Lu Van Nguyen. Whilst these are the iron handcuffs of St. Andrew Dung Lac. Here we can see that the handcuffs have three clasps. This one is for the neck, whilst the other two serve to shackle the legs. Whoever gave soldiers lots of money could count on having a chain loosened and so be able to adopt a more normal posture. Alternatively, guards would tighten the chain by a few eyelets, forcing prisoners to walk in a more hunched position and a lot more difficult to bear. From the arrival of the first recorded Portuguese missionary in Vietnam in 1533 to Prime Minister Nguyen Thang Dung's visit to the Holy See in 2007 spans five centuries a time marked by the persecution of Catholics and a church battling for the right to evangelize freely. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Dominican and Jesuit missionaries struggled with hostile Vietnamese rulers, a struggle that reached its zenith in the 19th century when tens of thousands of Catholics were bestially murdered. The 20th century, however, was a time dominated by communism, a system committed to eradicating every sign of religiosity. A very special museum presently stands in Ho Chi Minh City, a testament to the often harsh and difficult history of Vietnam's Catholic Church. The reason for building this center was to arouse in all believers the light of faith. In this hall we can see a boat. It symbolizes the arrival of the first Western missionaries who arrived here in a ship, whilst the first Vietnamese also met them on a boat. Presently, the boat is the symbol of Vietnam's Catholic community, one that sails between the two waves, those of culture and faith. On this side, we see a depiction of the West, whilst on the other, of the East. The Catholic community is like a boat sailing between the waves of Western and Eastern culture.